unethical monster may have single-handedly ruined the crypto boom for all of us. The man once valued at $16 billion made a string of unethical choices that led to its customers losing over $10 billion in just a span of a week. Join us as we delve into the world of decentralized finance and explore the ambitious rise of the CEO of Alameda Research and FTX, Sam Bankman-Fried. From his involvement in high-profile DeFi projects to the collapse of his companies, this is a tale of power, risk, and the future of finance. Sam Bankman Freed was born in Massachusetts and was born into a Jewish family on the Stanford University campus in 1992. He is the son of Stanford law professors Barbara Freed and Joseph Bankman. From 2010 to 2014, he attended the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where he went on to receive a bachelor's degree in physics and a minor in mathematics. During his time at MIT, Bankman Freed became interested in the world of finance and trading. He took courses in economics and finance and worked as a research assistant for the MIT Media Lab. Bankman Freed interned at Jane Street Capital, a proprietary trading firm on Wall Street, where he traded international ETFs during the summer of 2013. He returned to work there full time after graduating from MIT. He gained valuable experience in the world of finance and trading, and developed a passion for the fast paced world of high frequency trading. Bankman Freed left Jane Street in September 2017 and relocated to Berkeley, where he worked briefly as Director of Development at the Center for Effective Altruism from October to November 2017. Sam Bankman Freed founded FTX or Futures Exchange in May 2019. FTX began with Alameda Research, a trading firm founded by Bankman Freed, Carolyn Ellison, and other former employees of Jane Street in 2017. Cheng Peng Zhao of Binance purchased a 20% stake in FTX for approximately $100 million, six months after Bankman Freed started the firm. Soon enough, Bankman Freed went on a spending spree, acquiring competitors such as Blockfolio, a cryptocurrency portfolio tracking app for $150 million, and BlockFi, a digital asset lender for $240 million. In July 2021, the venture raised $900 million at an $18 billion valuation from over 60 investors. Bankman Freed was eventually able to buy out Zhao's stake for approximately $2 billion. In recent years, Bankman Freed has been the subject of controversy and scrutiny due to his involvement in the decentralized finance sector. DeFi, which allows for the creation of decentralized financial products and services using blockchain technology, has become increasingly popular among investors and has seen explosive growth in recent months. This growth has been driven by the potential for high returns as well as the increased accessibility and transparency offered by DeFi. Bloomberg reported in September 2022 on the close relationship between Alameda Research and FTX. Bloomberg noted that Alameda has functioned as a market maker for FTX early in the exchange's history, and that the trading firm remained in June and July 2022 the biggest known depositor of stablecoins on FTX. Bloomberg further stated that the regulatory oversight which applies to companies operating in traditional equities markets would have prohibited this relationship between the two firms if it were applicable. Alameda's trading on FTX meant the trading firm was potentially in a position to gain financially when others lost money on the exchange. It was later revealed that Alameda had a secret exemption from FTX's auto liquidation protocol and the existence of such a beneficial relationship between the two companies is a complete failure of corporate controls. According to anonymous sources cited by the Wall Street Journal, FTX had lent $10 billion of its customers' assets to Alameda Research in 2022. Alameda CEO Carolyn Ellison disclosed to other Alameda employees that she, Sam Bankman Freed, Gary Wang, and Nishad Singh knew about that decision. Several months after Bloomberg's initial report on the relationship between the two firms, on November 2, 2022, Coindesk reported that a significant portion of Alameda Research assets were held in FTT, the exchange token issued by FTX. 
In the weeks immediately preceding the publication of the story by Coindesk, Bankman Freed was characterized by anonymous sources cited by Bloomberg as desperately attempting to raise money for FTX. Additionally, Bankman Freed had been publicly dueling with Cheng Peng Zhao on Twitter in the months preceding the Coindesk article, in part due to disagreements stemming from their differing views on regulation of cryptocurrency. Several days after the publication of the Coindesk article, Binance CEO Cheng Peng Zhao said on Twitter that his firm intended to sell all its holdings of FTT. Binance had received FTT from FTX in 2021 during a transaction in which FTX bought back Binance's equity stake in FTX. Zhao cited recent revelations that came to light as the motivation for selling FTT. The announcement by Zhao of the pending sale and disputes between Zhao and Bankman Freed on Twitter led to a decline in the price of FTT in other cryptocurrencies, resulting in an estimated $6 billion in withdrawals that sent FTX into a crisis. FTX's website said that it was not processing withdrawals at that time. Bankman Freed said that although the firm's assets were worth more than its clients' deposits, it would need funds from outside to meet demand for withdrawals due to a lack of liquidity. Anonymous sources cited by the Wall Street Journal on November 10th said that Alameda Research owed FTX some $10 billion as FTX had lent funds placed on the exchange for trading to Alameda so that Alameda could make investments with the money. On November 17th, John J. Ray III, the CEO brought in as a liquidator, stated that according to FTX's records, its subsidiary, Alameda Research, had lent $1 billion to Bankman Freed and more than $500 million to FTX co-founder Nishad Singh as of September 30th. Ray stated, Never in my career have I seen such a complete failure of corporate controls and such a complete absence of trustworthy financial information as occurred here. From compromised systems integrity and faulty regulatory oversight abroad, to the concentration of control in the hands of a very small group of inexperienced, unsophisticated, and potentially compromised individuals. This situation is unprecedented. Sam Bankman Freed's controversy does not end with the collapse of FTX. With the money from his customers, authorities in the United States believe that Sam Bankman Freed broke various campaign finance regulations, including mailing donations to politicians in the identities of other persons. Bankman Freed was no ordinary donor. The former CEO was one of the Democratic Party's greatest contributors, publicly contributing tens of millions to groups and politicians. However, in a recent interview, Bankman Freed stated that he donated an equivalent amount to Republicans through dark or non-publicly declared techniques. Although some Republicans received donations from Bankman Freed, the money disproportionately went to Democrats. According to Federal Election Commission records, Bankman Freed contributed $50,000 to the Biden Victory Fund in October 2020 and another $2,800 to the Biden campaign that same month. Since FTX's demise, the White House has deferred inquiries about what Biden intends to do with his contributions to the Democratic National Committee. However, that figure is estimated to be around $10 million, much of it coming indirectly. More recently, Bankman Freed was the second largest donor to congressional Democrats ahead of last month's midterm election, donating at least $39.2 million, second only to left-wing billionaire George Soros. The news of FTX's collapse sent a ripple effect throughout the cryptocurrency industry. For example, the exchange token of Crypto.com, Kronos, lost approximately $1 billion in value in November, and Bitcoin sank to its lowest price in two years. The collapse has been especially ugly in terms of the legal action taken against the famous celebrities who either invested in FTX or took a check to become an official spokesperson. This list includes the likes of Tom Brady, Giselle Bündchen, Stephen Curry, Shaquille O'Neal, and Kevin O'Leary, aka Mr. Wonderful. Since the collapse, Sam Bankman Freed has been on a personal media tour talking publicly to news outlets ranging from Good Morning America to the BBC. The Royal Bahamas Police, the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York, and the United States House Committee on Financial Services have all started separate criminal investigations into the collapse. The U.S. House Committee on Financial Services is holding a hearing on December 13th, where they were expecting SBF's presence for the testimony. 
In a Twitter Spaces, Bankman Fried said, I don't think I will be arrested, referring to the scandal that has engulfed his business dealings since November. Hours later, authorities in the Bahamas, where Bankman Fried lives and FTX is based, arrested him following criminal charges filed by the U.S. Attorney's Office of the Southern District of New York. The SEC and CFTC are going after Bankman Fried, often referred to as SBF as well. After being denied bail by a judge in the Bahamas, he awaits an extradition hearing in jail there, set for February 8, 2023. As the investigations are underway, over the next few months, we will begin to see the aftermath of this collapse and the impending damage that FTX has done to the decentralized cryptocurrency industry.